Welcome to the Medical Menemist Podcast, your source for memory techniques and accelerated learning in higher education. Now, here's your host, Chase DeMarco. All right, how do you like that new music? So today's episode was actually recorded and I was going to wait to release it, but the next couple of interviews we have coming up all really focus on this topic, which is space retrieval. So I decided to release this before those just to give you a little bit of insight. You'll hear some of these terms mentioned again throughout the next few episodes. You'll also hear an occasional sponsorship ad throughout the next few episodes. I try to keep them light, try to keep them short, but that really, really helps to fund some of the production efforts that go into this. And again, if you would like more of these types of topics, more of these narrative kind of training episodes, just let me know. Send a message on social media to me, to any of the social media accounts for the Medical Nemonist, for Free Med Ed, for Inside the Boards, anything like that. You can look in the show notes for this episode, for past episodes, there are different links there. Just give some feedback and we can base future episodes on that. All right, let's get to the show. Welcome back to the Medical Nemesis Podcast. I am your host, Chase DeMarco. Today, I wanted to cover another topic that can be very, very confusing, and slight misinterpretations of this topic can really, really drastically affect positively or negatively your study habits. And that is going to be your spaced retrieval. So the term spaced retrieval actually means two different things. There is retrieval and recall practice where you recall information without being primed, without looking at any notes. You're just calling it from memory, closing your eyes and reciting a certain pathway or certain facts about a topic. And of course, the spacing effect is spacing out your retrieval practices, your recall practices throughout a certain amount of time. Generally, these practices, you start off with more frequent retrieval of the topic at hand, and then you space it out more and more as you become more familiar with it. For instance, one of the ways that I kind of remember it is a rule that I created for myself. It's the 11311 rule. 11311 stands for the spaces between the repetitions. So the first one is within one hour. There's been significant studies and evidence showing that if you look at the topic one more time within the first hour that you were initially introduced to it, it's going to greatly increase your memory for that topic. And then within one day, so generally follow up the next day with the same material you just covered the previous day. Rehearse it one more time, make sure that you have it. After that, generally you can space it out three days from that point, one week from that last point, and then one month from the week point. Now granted, this whole period takes about a month and a half. And you have to do this in synchronicity with new material that you're learning each consecutive day as you're recalling past information. So it can get a little complicated. So first, let's take the material you want to learn and put it into a proper format for space retrieval, because not all information is useful in this format. I actually learned way late in my studies that I had been doing it wrong for a long period of time. I was taking other people's flashcards. I was taking other notes from previous classes, and I was taking questions and answers from the end of chapters in textbooks that were going along in class and implementing those into a space repetition. And the problem with that is I was forcing not only a closed loop of memory, but also memorizing points that were more important to other people and not necessarily what I needed to focus on. I'm not saying that you can't use these, and you probably should at least look at some of these other resources and pick and choose bits that you think are useful for your own studies. But for instance, with Anki, there are online decks that you can download, and there are hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of flashcards pre-made there, so it'll save you a lot of time having to make your own. But which ones are going to be useful for you? You're not going to know until you test them out. And it takes a long time to test out 10,000 cards and slowly delete the ones you don't like or alter the ones you do like. I'd recommend maybe a hybrid approach to this. As you're going along in class and coming across new information, find bits that you're personally struggling with. Find information that you're having difficulty connecting to other information. Then the second part is going to be make this an open-ended question in your flashcards. So I usually recommend not having a closed-ended question. So maybe instead of what artery supplies the right kidney or something like that, you could say, What is the pathway of vasculature 
from the heart to the kidneys, something that's a little more expansive, something that requires you to have several steps in the pathway, or maybe even integrate several different topics. So instead of just an anatomy question, like which muscle causes flexion of the knee, you could ask yourself something integrated with neurodevelopment, with anatomy, with neurology. You could maybe integrate it in a fashion such as what is a complete mechanism of flexing the knee? So you could take this as far back or forward as you'd like. You could take it from the neuroscience of which motor cortex neurons are most likely firing, which pathways those are falling through, how the muscle spindle contracts, how a muscle spindle is formed. You could go back into embryology of development of muscles and nerves, all the way forward to which muscles are actually involved in the particular process you're talking about. So make it as open-ended as you can. Try to have a full sense of a process. And this way, as you go along, you might make one flashcard, but you're covering 5, 10, 15 topics, depending on how detailed you want to make it. And you can add multiple questions into the same front part of your flashcard, whether it be a digital or analog type of flashcard. So let's say the next time I'm doing my first repetition at the 24 hour mark, and I don't even remember what answer I was trying to get from this question. Then I can go back and edit the front part of the flashcard and add in a few more questions. I can have several questions on the same front end of the same card. That's perfectly fine, as long as it is guided towards how you're remembering it. There is a caveat here, though. You don't want to make the questions too obvious to yourself. You don't want to give yourself hints that'll make you remember the answer to the question you're asking the way you're asking it, without being able to relate the integrated amounts of information to it. So I might have a card that says, what is the pathophysiology of a kidney stone? Now I have multiple processes I can utilize. I can go through the different types of stones, how they're created, which different molecules are involved in each, what are the treatment patterns for each type of stone, which ones are radiolucent versus radioopaque. I can follow the pathway of the stone from the kidney down to the ureter. I can ask which nerves are potentially going to be irritated, where the pain is going to radiate to. I can cover the different types of diagnostic equipment and tests that can be run, the different signs and symptoms that the patient might present with, and go on and on and on. But if I look at the card the next day and read, what is the pathophysiology of the kidney stone, and I can't think of too many parts of it, or maybe one of the diseases I want to ask about has three tests in particular that I need to know, this is more step two than step one material, and in order, which one do I use first, which one do I use last, what is the best one? Then I might add an extra question next to what is the pathophysiology saying, what are the treatment options? And in parentheses, put a three. So I know there's three that I am trying to remember. So those are just some tips on how you can make your own cards, save a lot of time, and also make them as effective for you as possible. Another trick that a lot of people like to use nowadays, and I believe it was discussed a little bit in my first episode actually with Dr. David Larson, is to use screen capture software when making your flashcards. And as I implemented this a bit more and became more familiar with the technique, I realized how useful this can be and how stupid I was to not really use it previously. Instead of writing out all of these different notes, I can take a textbook or a video lecture that I'm watching and screenshot important parts, summarizations, charts, tables, and just put that into the answer section of Anki or whatever flashcard program you're using. From there, I can then look up and say, huh, what are the important parts? What questions do I want to answer regarding this image? And make several questions based on that. So it's a really, really easy, quick way, especially since most of us are already watching a lot of third-party videos and different lecture series, to utilize that material and recall the material by making our own flashcards. So now that we're using all of the resources at our fingertips, our textbooks, you can take a picture with your phone, screenshot if you have a digital textbook or if you're watching video lectures, putting these into our question banks, making open-ended questions, making integrated question systems so we can answer multiple questions for each flashcard that we see, really integrating the different parts of medicine that we need to know. How do we want to go about rehearsing this? So I discussed the 11311 rule and really, I just picked that because it makes sense within a day, within a week, within a month. I kind of wanted something within a day and a week, so pick three days as well just to get that one extra repetition within a week. 
And of course, the 24-hour one and the one-hour one seem to have a lot more evidence towards the necessity of training yourself quickly before you forget it, because that forgetting curve is very, very fast. Now, let's picture you're only doing five questions a day. That doesn't seem like much, especially if you're into hardcore studying. So let's start testing ourselves. Let's start assessing our abilities early on. If you can do this before you begin medical school, great. If you're looking at residency materials, start it early. Because within a few weeks, at five questions a day, with this 11311 rule, assuming you get 100% correct, you're going to start ending up with 20, 30, 40 questions a day within a couple of weeks as they start piling on. All the past repetitions pile on to the new repetitions, and it gets overbearing very quickly. So the point is, try not to overburden yourself by starting off too strong. Get into the process for a few weeks, try it out slowly. You can always add more later. If you start off with 20, 30 questions a day, by the end of a couple of weeks, when your one month repetitions start coming on to your new repetitions, you will have hundreds of questions a day and might just not have the time to do that. So play around with these. The earlier, the better. Test it out, try out different patterns, different numbers of questions per day. You can space it out differently if you want. I just chose that pattern because it's easy for me to remember. But then how do you actually use this within a program such as Anki? So I'm not a math whiz. I sort of just played around with it a little bit. Mine is not perfect. If you know better, feel free to write in, let me know. I can share it with the rest of the audience. But I set a few of the options in this manner, and it seemed to help out a little bit. So if you're using Anki, this is a pattern you can use. Go to the options setting. For the new cards tab, the first one that usually opens up, you can kind of set this up however you want. It's probably not going to make a huge difference. If you want to set the graduating interval a little higher, that's fine. The easy interval, you can set that higher, that's fine. The one you really want to focus on is the reviews tab. So I generally say to set the easy bonus option to around 200, 250, maybe 300%, depending on how wide or narrow you want your repetitions to be. So what this should end up being similar to is you should answer it the first day, you'll answer it the following day, your repetitions will show up as needing to be answered. And after that, I believe it's something like three days, eight days, and then maybe 14, 15 days after that, assuming you click that you got the answer correct. And after your second repetition, you'll notice that you have more options too. You can space it out even longer by claiming it as an easy card. That'll give you a wider gap before that card shows back up. So play around with these a little bit and try to get your repetitions into a format that's useful for you. So just a quick review, use open-ended questions when you're making your flashcards. You can utilize other pre-made cards if you want, but make sure you get rid of cards you don't need, don't keep reviewing what you already know, edit it so it is really personalized to your knowledge and what you need to study more and to your weaknesses and make them open-ended questions. Utilize your phone or screen capture for the computer to take screenshots of video lectures, of PowerPoints, of any resource that you find online that you think is going to be useful. Then play with space repetition to make sure you get the correct spacing effect for what you're going for. If you want a wider spacing effect, that's fine. If you need something more narrow, that's fine too. And in Anki, for instance, if you select that this card is hard, it'll then repeat it in less days instead of more days. So it does give you some options to play around with it, but it's far from perfect. All right, I think that'll about do it for today. There will be more detailed examples and explanations in the study skills book that should be released pretty soon, hoping in the next couple of weeks. Not sure how long the editing and publishing aspect is going to take, but I myself in conjunction with Ted O'Connell and Patrick Beeman, also members of the Inside the Boards Network, are working to make the ultimate study guide using our years of experience in medicine, in education, and the wealth of knowledge we've attained from other leading medical experts and through our interviews. So keep your ears open for that. And this is Chase DeMarco signing off. Thank you.